HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the turf fields at Hopkinton High School for Hopkinton Hillers softball against the Medfield Warriors. It is a good TBL battle here today between these two teams, and it certainly should be a fun one. And we'll go over the starting lineups in just a moment. Temperatures are in the 60s, a little bit windy out there today. But both of these teams ready to go for a big TBL large battle. The Hopkinton Hillers are 12 and 4 on the season, and the Medfield Warriors also 12 and 4 on the season. So this game could very well have a major impact in the TBL large title. The Hillers, led by head coach Shannon Albury, Medfield, led by head coach. Travis Telia Faro. And let's take a look at the lineup for the Medfield Warriors. Leading things off is the pitcher, Alana Potts. Ariana Tristani, the second baseman batting second, Laura Clifford, the first baseman batting third, Julia Farrell, the catcher hitting cleanup, Molly Glasheen, the shortstop hitting fifth, Maddie Mullaney, the designated player hitting sixth. Addie Gardner, the right fielder, hitting seventh. Caroline Mills, the third baseman, hitting eighth. And Madeline Holm, the center fielder, hitting ninth. And we are set for the first pitch from Juliana Cedia. And it's in there for a strike. With the Hillers defense, I'll send it to my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Gotcha. Third base, Tara Kester. At shortstop, Alyssa McIntyre. There's another strike. Emily Whalen at second base. Bella Onzi at first. Left field, Jordan Chevery. Captain, Katie Hawley in center field. Sienna Harrigan out in right field. Jillian Cedia behind the plate, catching her sister. There's a base hit to right field. Juliana Cedia. And there you have it. Field for the Hillers, as Medfield has the lead hitter aboard at first base on the hit there. They're not a running team, Tom. They certainly are, as Ariana Tristani steps in. And she'll take a strike. Can you hear me? Cedia is set to deal. Wind up and the pitch. And there's another strike. They've only got 13 steals on the year. The uh, Hiller girls have 62 steals based on my extensive research I did for this program. Set to deliver. Another strike there. It'll make the count one and two. And this is hit in the air over to right field and caught for the first out of the inning. Sienna Harrigan making the catch. That'll bring up Laura Clifford. The uh, Warriors are hitting about 100 points lower than the Hillers, 323 coming into the, today's game. Wind up and the pitch, just inside. Set to deliver. Down low. Nice block by Jill Cedia. Certainly was. Last game, I understand that you covered. They had some pass balls. And this is hit over to left field, and it is caught. Runner at first will stay put.
So that'll bring up Julia Farrell, the catcher. Two outs, one on. Farrell's hitting 338 on the year. Up high. CD is set to deliver. Just inside. We get a good view of high low, but not uh, inside outside. Lined up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air, pop fly, and it's handled by the shortstop. And that'll wrap up the top half of the first, bottom of the first, coming up next on HCAM. Bottom of the first inning, Hopkinton coming up to the plate to face Alana Potts. Let's take a look at the Hillers lineup. Second baseman Emily Whalen batting first. Tara Kester, the third baseman hitting second. Katie Holly, the center fielder hitting third. Jillian Cedia, the catcher hitting cleanup. Kristen McCluskey, the designated player hitting fifth. Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop hitting sixth. Juliana Cedia, the pitcher hitting seventh. Sienna Harrigan, the right fielder hitting eighth. And Bella Ansi, the first baseman hitting ninth. As Emily Whalen set to step in and take the first pitch from Alana Potts, who has been sensational for the Medfield Warriors. And she lays down a nice bunt. Slow roller up the middle, no play is made. Emily Whalen is aboard to start things off. Tara Kester coming to the plate with the Medfield defense. I send it over to Larry Sacklad. We have Carolyn Mills at third base, playing in for the bunt. Emily Whalen on first base. Molly Glasheen at short. Ariana Tristani at second base. Laura Clifford at first base. Left to right after this pitch. The bunt foul. Sabrina Lee in left. Madeline Holm in center. Addie Gardner in right field. Julia Farrell catching senior Alana Poles. Tara Kester awaits the pitch. I say she tries to bunt again. She's hitting a 400 this season. She's had a really good year at the plate. And there is the attempted bunt. Six. Well, that's the tendencies. What they tend to do in the first inning is they get a runner on first base like Emily, high on base percentage, bunt her over, and wait for Katie Hawley to get up. Line up on the pitch from Potts, swing and a miss. And there is out number one. So runner on first, one out. Katie Hawley, the center fielder, will step in. She's been hot. She's a titan with the stick. She's hitting 638. That's amazing. It certainly is. Alana Potts has pitched well for Medfield. We'll get you some stats in just a moment. Hit over to shortstop, throw to second, 4 1. That's all they'll get. 6 to 4 on the force out. That'll bring up Jillian Cedia, the catcher. Alana Potts has pitched well for Medfield this season. She's in her senior year. She is 11 and 3 overall in the mound, 15 appearances. She has pitched 98 innings, struck out 126. And her ERA is 1.50. Pretty impressive stuff. She's towards the top of the TVL. Runner from first taking off and a steal by Katie Holly. She took the pace with her, giving her teammates a nice laugh. Uh, that's her 15th steal on the year. They're running, running, running ball club, these Hopkins and Hillers. I like it. You got the stats ready to roll. Today. Right. I was up all night last night. And that's going to get by the catcher and allow Katie Holly to advance to the third. Now she's 60 feet away from scoring. Wild pitch there. How about uh, Julian Cedia at the plate this season? A 6.04 batting average. That is just tremendous. Five home runs. She had a crush a home run against Dedham the other day. Up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first. Not a problem. Six to three on the out. So we are through the first inning and we are scoreless as we head to the top of the second on H cam. We are set for the top of the second inning. Due up for the Medfield Warriors is five, six, and seven. Molly Glasheen, the shortstop. Maddie Mullaney, the designated player. And Addie Gardner, the right fielder. To face Juliana Cedia. 
Cedia delivers a strike. And Cedia's had a great year in the pitcher's circle as well. Certainly has, certainly has. Get you some of those numbers in a moment as she is set to deliver. There's strike two. Juliana Cedia uh, has a 236 ERA, four wins, one loss, 11 appearances. Has thrown 62 and a third and struck out 50. That's she's got three more years to go. Right. And she's been sharing time, of course, in the pitcher's circle with Charlotte Can, who's pitched well also. She pitched very good against Dedham the other day. Dedham a good hitting team, but Can kept them at bay and kept the Hillers in the game. Unfortunately, they lost three to two. So that's fouled away. Well, they did beat Medfield in Medfield five to four, but I'll let you in on a little secret. They've been watching our broadcasts, and that's how they defended the Hillers. One of the Medfield players let it slip to a Hopkins player that they watched all of our telecasts, and that's how they position all their players. So it's a little sly on their part. Ah. Uh -huh. well, hey, if you're a coach, you're doing the same ah. thing. Yeah, but they had the whole team watching. <laughs> One and two is the count. Medfield as a team hitting a 325. Line up in the pitch, down low. See a young man in sunglasses without the sun out here. He's trying to be incognito. Former Hopkins and varsity baseball player, Brett McIntyre, brother of Melissa McIntyre. And there is Tom Onzi, an alumni of Hopkins ah. and baseball. Plays club ball at the University of Michigan. That's right, it's the summer break for colleges now. Yeah, yeah. Here is the 2-2. Swing and a miss, a nice breaking pitch there. Picked up by Cedia, throw to first, not a problem. They'll bring up Maddie Mullaney, the designated player. She's hitting 262 on the year, Miss Mullaney. And when you compare the Team's batting average of Hiller's hitting a 432 compared to Medfield's 335 as it's fouled away. The Hillers have certainly had a large supply of offense this season. It's just the stolen base differential alone. About 40. That is just high. Believe it or not, only four games left, or actually three games left during the regular season for the Hillers. They'll have their last regular season home game next week as that pitch is high against Norwood. That's a makeup game. That's going to be a big battle. Norwood having a great season. Huge battle. Huge. Can I file a complaint? Sure. I think that we need to be outfitted with some Hillers regalia. How about <laughs> some... Uh, Head, headgear. As this is up the left side, we'll, we'll send that to management. Throw to first, and they get the out. Are you listening, D. King? <laughs> Coach Allenby, I would like a little Hiller regalia for the keep my head warm during these broadcasts. All well, the money we make here. <laughs> Addie Gardner steps in. Well, you do get an awfully big paycheck. Yes. Just outside, one and oh. I spend it all on dinner after I leave. <laughs> Red Sox had an afternoon game today. They got a win against the Blue Jays as there's a strike, one and one. Rumor has it that uh, we've got some viewers in downtown Boston, a large office building, in the financial district. Tremendous. All tuned in on their computers with their doors shut. That pitch was just outside, two and one. I think it's a mutual fund company. I won't mention any names. Well, I can't think of many better things to do at work than watch Hiller <laughs> softball. Because that's down low, three and one. Let's take you through the TVL standings for softball. Let's do that. The Hillers and Medfield tied right at the top of the TVL large with 12 and four records. Swing and a miss. And that is going to make the count three and two. Norwood is nine and four. They have a whole lot of makeup games to play in the next couple of weeks. Ashland four and 10, as this is hit in the air over towards Emily Whalen, who makes the catch for the third and final out. We'll keep things right here and continue through the standings. Holliston is two and 14, Westwood two and 13. 
Over in the TVL small, Norton 13 and 4, Bellingham 11 and 4, Medway 11 and 6, Dedham 12 and 5, Miller 6 and 11, Dover Sherborne 2 and 15, a highly competitive TVL small. Oh, I thought you were going to say Dover Sherborne was highly competitive. <laughs> Filling a, a few raindrops, Tom. Uh, well, hopefully it'll hold off, but we'll have to wait and see. Should I go get your rain slicker? Anyhow, the bottom of the second coming up next on HCAM. I'll bet you didn't know this, Tom, but uh, HCAM Sports is supported by viewers and Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street in Hopkinton. You can find them online at mybillspizza.com. Thank you very much, Larry, as there is a strike to Kristen McCluskey, the designated player. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to be with you for Hiller's softball. John Ritz is our cameraman today. A cloudy day, but a pretty nice day nonetheless. There's a bunt, and that is foul. That's fair. Oh, right yeah. out in front of home plate. The umpire ruled it foul. Or actually, did they call her out? They did. They called her out. Right out in front of her. That was a... Uh, I think uh, Kristen McCluskey had some doubt if she should run or not. There was a little hesitation She, she did. Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, steps in. When in doubt, dash. That's the old adage. That's right. Down low. Alyssa's hitting 331 on the year. 351. Pardon me. 351. <laughs> you got the numbers right there, Larry. His right father's going to hit a guardrail on the mass bike. Fouled away, one and one. Her father, excuse me. Liz McIntyre has done well at the plate. And hoping to get something started here in the bottom of the second. And she'll get a piece of this one in a right field it goes, and that's going to be a one-out single. It'll bring up Juliana Cedia, the pitcher. Gardner charged that ball, had some designs on trying to throw a lifter out, but that wasn't going to happen. Juliana is hitting 480, 480 on the year. Pretty impressive. There's a strike. She has a home run and four doubles. 11 runs driven in, six scored. Alana Potts gets the sign she likes, but Cedia needs some time. Sienna Harrigan do up next. Potts delivers. Is that a called strike? It was. I guess the bat might have went around a little too much. Yeah. Oh, and two. That's what happens if the bat goes around and it misses the ball. I wasn't it's called sure a strike. she swung there. <laughs> <laughs> My view was blocked. Oh, that's another excuse. Swing and a miss. There's out number two. Second strikeout of the inning for Alana Potts, third of the game. Sienna Harrigan, the right fielder, will step in. She's got quite a few steals on the year, Sienna Harrigan, but she's not on base. Line up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Throw to first, runner slides back safe. Sienna Harrigan, a 226 batting average on the season, seven runs scored, seven driven in. Two doubles to her credit. Pot steals down low. One and one. Alyssa McIntyre's not a speed demon. She's only got three three steals on the year. But she may she may be sent here with two out. Pot steals. There's a bunt, and it's just in front of Potts. Throw to first, not a problem. One to three for the out to the top of the third we go. We're scoreless. Here in Hopkinton on H Cam. Top of the third inning, due up for Medfield is 8 9 and 1. Caroline Mills, Madeline Home, and Alana Potts to face Juliana Cedia. And well, it does seem like some rain's starting to fall. I told you. It's getting a little Bring misty out coat. here. Hopefully it holds off. 
Well, Mills, according to the max prep stats, it's hitting 071. Not a lofty average, so Juliana Cedia ought to make some hay with the bottom part of this order. Here's the 1 0. There's a strike, one and one. We get 071. Strike two. 143 and 192. With these oh. three hitters coming up here. This is the part of the order you want to get out quickly. Rain is expected in the area later. Not expected to get heavy during this game. One away, that'll bring up Madeline home. The boys' varsity team is down in Franklin right now at the Pajoli Tournament, playing the number one ranked Franklin Panthers, I think. There's a strike. Are they Panthers, Franklin? Yep. All right. Only one loss this year. Previous to that, their uh, only loss was by the Hillers last year in the Pajoli Tournament. That's a... Uh, Trivia, piece of trivia for the fans at home. Good stuff. One and one. Down low. A little disappointed in the crowd size today given the uh, import of this game, Tom. Well, it isn't the nicest day out weather wise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. People are at home in front of their computer screen. There's a strike. And a lot of people are at work. That's true. We're at work. That's right. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Out number two. Strikeout number three in the game for CD as the rain's starting to get a little heavier now. Yeah, you wouldn't have got a hold of that pitch with a stepladder. <laughs> Alana Potts will step in. She singled in her only plate appearance in the game. Strike. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. You covered senior day or senior night, they called it last game, correct? That's correct. That was the Denham game. And they have. Number of talented seniors, as that'll make the count one and two. Potts didn't look good on that. I understand you had some audio difficulties during the uh, the annual poem, but uh, I asked the coach for it, and she's got a copy we might be able to read on air. Tr terrific, you could do that if you'd yeah. like. That's <laughs> cringeworthy. <laughs> two and two <laughs> is the count. I know you look forward to the poem every year. Yes, every year. Inside, full count. Three seniors this year for the Hillers, including Emily Whalen, fellow Ansi, and Holly. Katie Holly. Yeah. Three very talented seniors as that is fouled away. Last yeah. year there was only one retiree, Emma Murphy, who went to Endicott College this year. So the uh, Hopkins and Hillers look good in terms of uh, Restacking the deck for next year. CD deals. Just low and Potts draws the walk. So two outs, one on for Medfield. We're in the top of the third, a scoreless game so far. Ariana Tristani, the second baseman, will step in. She's a big hitter, that Tristani girl. She's hitting 5'18 five, five on the season. Side. Cedia going head hunting there. CD deals and therefore strike one and one. Up the middle, glove by Whalen, flip to second, no problem. A four to six force out to retire the side. 
Here in the top of the third to the bottom of the third we go. We are scoreless on H cam. Bottom of third, leading off is Bella Ansi. Big brother Tom looking on. She's hitting 333 on the year. Potts ready to step on the rubber. She deals. Foul tip. Off the catcher. Strike one. A lot of chirping in the Hopkin and dugout. Not much noise coming out of the midfield. Cage over there. Not a big fan of the midfield Warriors uniforms. They look like the pop fly down the left field line. That's going to go foul. Look like t shirts. Oh, they're a very affluent town. But the Hillers look all decked out in their nice Nike whites and green. Boosters were obviously. Very supportive to the Hiller girls, getting them some nice unis. The ball outside. One and two on Ansi. Potts delivers. Fouled off by Ansi. Change up. Count still, one and two. Nobody out in the bottom of the third. Thank you, Larry. Had to go uh, get oh, some don't rain tell us, here. Don't, don't, don't tell me we had to go. <laughs> None of my business. <laughs> that is up the middle. Potts picks it up, throw to first, not a problem. One to three for out number one. Emily Whalen, the second baseman, will step in. Spongy. Whalen singled in her only plate appearance. Yeah, Potts uh, tried to pick up the ball, but she had to get a get her knife and fork out to get Emily Whalen out. Didn't even make a throw. And this is up the right side, picked up by the first baseman, and a three unassisted ground out for out number two. Tara Kester will step in. Tara is the, uh, you know, the real ball player in the family. Her brother uh, Ryan is down at Franklin playing. He wears number 14. She wears number four. She's a better hitter, just in case they want to fight over the dinner tonight. Has Ryan confronted you about some of the things you say? No, because he can't listen to the game and play ball. <laughs> It's a little trickery on my part. So she's hitting like 400 and he's hitting like 286 and there's a swing and strike. 0 oh and 2 is the count. Tara did strike out in her only plate appearance in this game. But this game certainly has pitcher's duel written all over it. It certainly does, certainly does. Swing and a miss. And there's strike number three for out number three. To the fourth we go. We are scoreless here in Hopkinton on HCAM. Got news out of Franklin. Hot news right off the presses. What is the it? Hopkins and Varsity is up 3 nothing after one half inning against the Franklin Panthers. Oh, boy. Big game over in Franklin. Top of the fourth, due up for Medfield. 3-4 and 5, Laura Clifford, Julia Farrell, and Molly Glasheen. CD deals up high. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for Hiller's softball. John Ritz on camera. A scoreless game here as we start the top of the fourth. There's a strike. Brendan Kelly got the start today for Hopkinton. Coach Simos is number one. Bringing out the aces for that game. Oh yeah, they want that one badly. Down low. A three and O oh count. According to the scoreboard. Wind up in the pitch. Gets a piece of this one over to left field and it's caught by Chevery, one away. She's automatic out there, that Jordan Chevery. The Canadian import. 
I'll bring up Julia Farrell, the catcher and cleanup hitter for Medfield. Here's a strike. No, a I think ball. he called Excuse it a me. ball. That was. Yeah, he has some interesting. Uh, I'm going to call. Uh, hand signs there. I'm going to call. Uh, no, I'm not going to call on that pitch. Julia Farrell, a junior, hitting a 358. Gets a piece of this one fouled up the third base side. Put it this way, I didn't like the call. I didn't either. Tara Kester picked up that ball. She's only a sophomore. Farrell has 10 runs scored, 16 driven in, and seven doubles for Medfield. There's a strike. One and two. Cedia seems to be in a groove. And that is tipped foul. Count remains one and two. A very defensive swing. I think she got the change up. She was looking for the uh, the express, I think. Got the uh, change. That's fouled away. Uh, what do you say, Tom? Uh, Potts and CD about equal in velocity? I would say so. Maybe Potts has a little bit more. I think Cedia has more of a selection of breaking pitches, however. This is driven over to center field, past the reach of Katie Hawley. Rounding first, heading to second is Farrell, and she's aboard with a one-out double. Would you say it's like the difference between light mustard and golden mustard, their velocity? Sure, Larry, okay. if you want to put it that way. As Molly Glasheen, the shortstop, will step in. We had someone asking on YouTube uh, who's in the white jerseys. That's the Hillers. Medfield, of course, in the blue jerseys. Yeah, I had made a comment about the uh, difference in uniforms uh, while you were gone getting a rain slicker. They don't even have matching socks. The 1-0 fouled away. One and one. Lachine hitting a 382 on the season. 14 runs scored, 20 driven in. Nice breaking pitch there for a strike. One and two. Off speed pitch from Cedia. Lachine not happy with herself. Cedia deals. And this is hit in the air. Right side, foul territory out of the yard. Now remains one and two. Line up and the pitch. Hit in the air, sky high, and Whalen ranges to her left to make the catch, two away. She doesn't drop many of those. It's almost automatic. The ball goes up, Whalen's gonna get it. Maddie Mullaney, the designated player, will step in. She's hitting a 262 on the season. Two runs scored, nine driven in. Three doubles to her credit. So it's a runner on second with two outs for Medfield. Julia Farrell had a nice double earlier in the inning over the reach of Katie Holly. That was it real hard. Katie Holly didn't even have a second to think about it. She just had to take a drop step and run back to the wall to be a pinch runner. We will indeed have a pinch runner for Farrell. And we'll try to get you the number on that pinch runner when we have a moment. That's up high. See the Hillers on their uniforms have their numbers on the front. It's uh, Bitsy Crowley who's in there, freshman, pinch running for Julia Farrell. There's ball two. A little outside, a little outside. One run could very well make the difference here, Tom. Certainly could. There's a strike, two and one. Outfield playing fairly deep. CD deals, swing and a miss, two and two. 
I think she threw the riser. That's tough to say. I think she threw the rise ball on her. Oh, it's a 2-2 cow. Will we see an attempted steal here? I do not think so. Foul tip. I hope she's okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that's why they wear masks, right? That's right. I don't think it phased her. The 2-2 pitch. Hit in the air, and it is out of the reach of everybody. I never used to wear a mask when I caught when I was younger. That sort of explains why I'm not uh, on TV. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Were you a catcher? I was a catcher. Can't wow. you tell by my well-defined legs? Actually, the way you wear the cap, I should have known. That pitch just low, that'll fill up the count. Now she'll be off with the pitch. The pinch runner will. Swing and a miss for out number three. A nice job by Cedia battling through after a one out double. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. We are scoreless on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Bottom of the fourth inning, Katie Holly stepping in. Three, four, and five do up for the Hillers. Katie Holly, Jillian Cedia, Kristen McCluskey, as this is up the left side, bobbled by the third baseman, and Holly's gonna reach on the error. Mills had no chance on that one. I don't even know why she threw over with the speedy Katie Holly. Burning down the first baseline. Julian Cedia will step in. I don't think Coach Allenby will ask uh, Julian to uh, bunt with her power. She can make it 2 nothing really, really quick, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Katie Hawley steals. And Hawley is taking off. This is up the middle. Glove by the second baseman. Flip to the shortstop, and she ended up dropping it as Hawley slid into second base. And I think got a piece of the shortstop, Glasheen, and she just wasn't able to hang on. Everybody safe. Well, good thing that she wasn't wearing metal spikes or there could have been an ugly incident out there. So Julian Cedia reaches, and I don't know if you could call that an error. No. I'm going to give her a single there. Chris McCluskey Hard hit ball. In. Yeah, it was a very hard hit. It was a good flip by the second baseman, Ariana Tristani, who flipped it with her glove. Yeah, but Katie Hawley bearing down on her. She might have heard footsteps. That's what she might have heard. Got a pinch runner for Cedia. There's a strike, and the pinch runner for CD is Megan Sullivan. Just in case you were wondering. There is rain on the way after taking a look at the HCAM Weather Center. This is up the left side, bobbled by the third baseman. Everybody's safe. That was a very tough play to make. She was trying to make the backhanded nah, catch. Was, wasn't that tough. And Flashing. I'm, uh, I'm giving McCluskey the single I'll there. give her a single. Third baseman uh, Mills was in, and Glasheen had to go all the way over towards third to get that one. There was really no chance. Melissa McIntyre, the shortstop, steps in. So it's bases loaded, no outs for the Hillers. This they is where they can really make some hay here, Tom. And this is up the middle, right to the pitcher. Throw home. They'll get the out at home plate. Very smart play there by Alana Potts. So they get the force out, the one to two force out. Cedia up to third, McCluskey up to second. Juliana Cedia to the plate. Maybe the, be a little patient here and not go after the first pitch. Down low. Big pots work a little bit. Work her pitch count up, Tom. Bases loaded, one out. Pot steals, breaking pitch high, two and oh. You better believe if the catcher bobbles that ball, Holly's gonna be sliding into home. She's an excellent base runner. Well, she's been retired, so I'll take that back. There's a strike. Mm, looked a little low to me. Two and one. It's Megan Sullivan over at third. She certainly has a lot of speed as well. 
They're an aggressive running team, as I mentioned before, Tom. Fouled away. Ooh, heads up in the on-deck circle. Heads up, heads up. Two and two. So another factor to keep in mind with heavy rain on the way, once you get through that top of the fifth, it's an official game. What does that mean? Well, that means if the Hillers score here and rain ends up postponing it, we'll get the W. Unless oh. Bedfield's able to score some runs in the fifth, of course. Full count on Cedia. If Potts throws a ball here, that'll drive in a run. Swing and a miss, a big strikeout. Out number two, and Sienna Harrigan, the right fielder, will step in. Well, Potts gets out of this jam. That is pretty impressive. His base is loaded with no outs at one point. Now it's bases loaded, two outs. Swing and a miss. Harrigan grounded out in her only plate appearance. She looked overmatched on that pitch. She's gonna swing a little bit earlier. Gets a piece of this one fouled away. Oh and two. Potts is one strike from wiggling her way out of this jam. It was about the worst case scenario when Alyssa McIntyre was at the plate to round it back to the pitcher. Swing and a miss, and she gets out of the jam. We'll head to the top of the fifth. We're scoreless on H cam. Top of the fifth inning. Lana Potts and the Medfield Warriors worked themselves out of a jam last inning. Hillers had bases loaded, no outs, but no runs come around as Addie Gardner steps in. See if she lays down a bunt or tries. She'll get a piece of this one over to left field and caught by Jordan Chevery. One pitch, one out. That'll bring up Caroline Mills, the third baseman. She's hitting way below the Mendoza line. Is I don't know what you call it if you're hitting under 100. Under 200 is the Mendoza. Call it the Larry Sacklad line. Yes, yeah, strike. Here's Looks strike. at that one. What did you hit when you played ball? Yeah. 125, something like that? A little higher than that. <laughs> Buck well, 30. You were a catcher. Yeah, I was a catcher. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot of pressure on my legs. CD is set to deal the 1-1. One, one. Just high. Two and one. Lined up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Two and two. Caroline Mills struck out in her only plate appearance back in the third. Nice breaking pitch, but a little outside, says the home plate umpire. Counts full. CD doesn't want to lose Mills, certainly. And this is hit up the left side. That'll drop into left field, and it's a one-out base hit for Mills. It'll bring up Madeline Holm, the center fielder. Well, that's the third hit for Medfield in the game. They're gonna have a pinch runner for Mills. So pinch runner for Medfield is Madeline Holmes set to step in. She's hitting a 143 this season. Score at Franklin is three to two. The end of one. They're only through one inning. Okay, I don't I don't I don't make the scores up. I'm just wow. reporting scores. That's a long inning. Yeah. You know, call somebody. I'm assuming your score update's a little aged. There's a strike. Couple of miscues by the boys. 
That always elongates things. Strike two. On the outside corner. Well, every Hiller's spring team has clinched a postseason spot. Every? Even every, tennis? Every single one of them. Oh, oh the Hiller's tennis program has been great over the last few years. Boy. Swing and a miss out number two. She casted her bat out there like she was catching a fish. Anything, anything like so, anything. This that one by a mile. It's the fifth strikeout of the day for Juliana Cedia. Lana Potts steps in. There's a strike. Lana Potts is one for one with a walk. I think this is a grudge match here. Potts got Cedia in her last at bat. Two can play at this game. And this is up the middle, past the reach of Cedia, picked up by Whalen, and she this doesn't have out. a play. Runner interference. Yeah, there was some runner interference there. And that is going to do it for the top of the fifth. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth, still scoreless here on HCAM. Bottom of the fifth inning, 9-1 and 2 do up for the Hillers. Bella Ansi, Emily Whalen, and Tara Kester. And this is hit foul towards us, 0 oh and 1. Not a big fan of swinging at the first pitch. Hillers have been very aggressive so far with Potts and haven't had much to show for it. Belancy hitting pretty well this season, a 333 batting average. Has been very stable over at first base. Four runs scored, eight driven in. Two doubles and a triple to her credit. She missed some games during April vacation over in France, I think. And she'll get a piece of this one up the middle, picked up by Potts, throw to first, not a problem. One to three for out number one. Emily Whalen, the second baseman, will step in. The rain is approaching us, so we're keeping an eye on the radar here. Rain is starting to fall, and it could be heavy, so we're hoping we'll get this game in, but we'll have to see. Rain was initially supposed to start later in the day, but is a strike. <laughs> Apparently that's not the case. Oh and one on Whalen. She grounded out the first base her last time up. First time up, she hit a little ball in front of the plate that Potts had to eat. Whalen's hitting a 557, but this won't help her average as she flies out. Two away. They'll bring up Tara Kester, the third baseman. So we have a score update from the baseball game. Hopkinton leading Franklin 3-2 at the end of two. First pitch to Kester, I believe, was a ball. Not a fan how the umpire sticks his arm out sometimes when it's a ball. Swing and a miss, one and one. You might notice the midfield pitcher has got uh, a little uh, wristband there on her arm. She'll get a piece of this one over to right field. Could be trouble, no, it's caught. Nicely done by Addie Gardner, who was speedy getting to that one to make the catch for the third out. We'll head to the top of the six. We're scoreless on H cam. Top of the sixth inning, rain starting to fall, so it's gonna make things pretty interesting throughout the remainder of this game. Well, the rain doesn't go up, so it's gotta fall. Very, very funny. Two, three, and four do up. Ariana Tristani, Laura Clifford, Julia Farrell. Line up in the pitch from Cedia, and she'll rip this one into right field. That'll get down. And it's a single to start things off here in the six for Medfield. Laura Clifford, the first baseman, will step in. Hey, 
CD is set to deal. Just low. Thought the home plate umpire was going to raise his hand. Hope the rain stays away. I got to do my doctoral work on my doctoral thesis when I get home. Ball two. I'm doing my thesis on black holes. Very interesting study. Line up in the pitch. Three and O. Oh. Cedia having some struggles here against Laura Clifford. Set to deliver. And there's ball four. Laura Clifford was hitting a 455 going into this game, and she'll add on to her. On base percentage there. It's now two on with no outs for Medfield. Big opportunity here for the cleanup hitter, Julia Farrell. Well, I think the uh, third base coach, the manager, gave her the hit away sign. Pitch outside, one and oh. Unlikely she would bunt. Be like having Jill Seedy a bunt. Set to deliver, upstairs. Well, it has been one rainy month, and the rain falling here at Hopkinton High School as there is a strike. It is a slow rain for the moment, so hopefully that trend will continue. Charlotte can going down to the bullpen. Well, it's not a bullpen, it's just an area out of play. This is a fair ball up the right side, picked up by Ansi, throw to first, and they'll get the out at first. Runners push up to second and third. Nicely done by Ansi to get the ball there in time. Heads up play by Whalen to get over to cover first base. It was just a good throw there by Otzi as Molly Glasheen will step in. I don't know. I thought she was waiting for the ball to spin foul. I think she did for a little while. But she picked it up just in time. Two and O count on Glasheen. That's why Emily Wayland's going to be playing some college ball at UMass Amherst. Upstairs, three and O. So it's two on with one out for Medfield. And now Julian and Cedia are going to have some words of encouragement for her sister, Juliana. Is that what's happening out there? I thought she would have done that with the hitter before that, but first base is open here. Not that you uh, see double plays all that often in girls softball with a 60-foot base pass. Swing and a miss. The scoreboard's right, it counts two and one. Down low, nice three block. and one. Nice block, nice block. The three one. There's a strike. Begging for a walk up there, begging for a walk. Well, we saw Alana Potts walk, uh, work out of a bases loaded, no out jam. Could Juliana Cedia work out of this jam? It was two on with no outs at one point. Now there's one out. This is hit in the air over to Whalen, makes the catch, two away. The runners stay put. Whalen was looking right at third base. She was looking to get Tristani. Maddie Mullaney will step in, the designated player. She came into the game hitting 262, Tom. According to my extensive research I did last night. It just seems that Emily Whalen knows what to do in every situation. Knows where to look, where to concentrate. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes out there. We're gonna have a pinch runner for Medfield. Is that number two or just her sweatshirt? I'm assuming that's number two. They have to wear official gear during the uh, 
regular season games. Oh. She could be a ringer, though, Tom. And there for a strike. It's Katie O'Connor, the pinch runner. Oh, and one count on Mullaney. Gets a piece of this one into left center. One run is in, and a second run being waved around, and she will score as well. It is a two RBI double for Maddie Mullaney. And Medfield draws first blood and takes the 2 0 lead. Addie Gardner will step in. For some reason, I th didn't think Katie Hawley had her hand in her glove for a second. She looked surprised. Yeah, she looked uh, a little caught off guard by that one, but she wouldn't have gotten to that anyway. The ball was nicely hit by Mulaney. Another pinch runner. Well, this is going to put the Hillers down to their last six outs. Wind up and the pitch. And therefore, a strike. Oh, and one. That pitch had a little extra oomph to it. Gardner has flown out in both of her plate appearances. Oh, and two. Juliana heading towards the bottom part of the midfield order. In there for strike three and out number three, but not before. Medfield plates two runs. It's a 2-0 Medfield lead as we head to the bottom of the six on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Very good, Tom, very good. Katie Holly steps in, three, four, and five do up for the Hillers. This is the time to shine for Hopkinton. Holly gets a piece of this one over to left field. That's past the reach of Sabrina Lee. Holly on her way to second. Now she's going to head over to third, and she's safe with a stand-up triple to start off the inning. Katie Holly getting the job done there, and now Jillian Cedia will step in. That ball was tailing away from Sabrina Lee. She missed it, and that ball went all the way to the wall. Tying run at the plate. A 2-0 lead for Medfield. A little life in the Hillers dugout, a little life. Hopefully CDO will be a little patient at the plate. Last One swing of the bat, you know where that ball goes. Last inning it was a single and a walk to start off the inning for Medfield and a two RBI double for Maddie Mullaney to make it a 2-0 game. And this is hit into right field. That'll get down. Katie Holly around to score. It's an RBI single for Jillian Cedia. It's a two to one game. Look for a pinch runner here, Tom. Look for a pinch runner. Kristen McCluskey, the designated player, due up next. And we are going to have a pinch runner. Megan Sullivan will come back out. Cedia just took a rip at that first pitch. See the water spray up there when it hit the turf? She's got a great piece of it. And that's just what the Hillers needed. No outs in the inning. A run is in. Outside, one and oh. No sign of a steal here. Coach Allen be playing it a little safe. Kristen McCluskey hitting a 439. Very impressive by the sophomore. That pitch outside. She looked all the way in on that one. 18 for 41 overall, 14 runs scored, four driven in, two doubles and two triples to her credit. Maybe square around the bun here and pull it back. Upset Potts' rhythm. And she will hit this one in the air, popped up just in front of us and off the tripod it goes. It was a great attempt by Caroline Mills to try to make that catch. I thought for a second I was going to have to make a diving move to get John out of the way. Did you hear the train whistle? Two and one. Well, there's our close call of the season so far. I wasn't scared. Yeah, you're behind that's the a, fence. That's a life. You're behind the fence. That's you're out right. of the danger. That's right. That's right. I am. John's right in the action. And this is ripped up the middle, but a nice catch by the second baseman, Ariana Tristani. 
for the first out of the inning. That was a snow cone, a little bit of a snow cone. Saw some green. Now Alyssa McIntyre will step in. One for two today. And she was the start of getting out of the bases loaded jam back in the fourth. That's true. She had Very a soft true. grounder right to the pitcher. She'll get a piece of this one fouled away. Past the porta potty it goes. O and one. Hopefully there's nobody in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it went off the roof actually. It smells over there. No, they maintain them very well. Yes, they do. That's true. One out and one on. As this is up the middle and the flip to second for one, that's all they'll get. So Alyssa McIntyre reaches on the force out two away. Four to six force out. That'll bring up Juliana Cedia, the pitcher. Well, Coach Allenby can send Alyssa McIntyre if she wants and should she be thrown out, she'll lead off with Cedia in the bottom half of the seventh inning. How's she gonna, what's she gonna do here? There's a foul tip. Oh, and one. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss, so oh and two. Very, very late on that pitch. We're in the bottom of the six. It's a two to one Medfield lead. Here's what I think the conversation is. I'm gonna send Alyssa. Take the pitch. We'll see if you're right. Oh, we got some Medfield people listening to the broadcast, so be careful there. <laughs> well, I don't see any hand signals. They're, they're texting the coaching staff. No, right I don't think that's gonna happen. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the left side, past the reach of the third baseman, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first, and it's dropped. Everybody's safe. And now McIntyre heads over to third, and that's where she will stay. It's a good thing she didn't try to go home there. She would have been thrown out if she did. But that is going to be a single for Juliana Cedia. Tough play to make there by the shortstop. I love a pitch runner. Sienna Harrigan stepping to the plate and stepping over to First base to oh, pinch run is Carly Stevens. Here comes our first meeting. Hopefully it's not gonna go as long as town meeting did this year, Tom. Hopefully not. <laughs> so there's two outs in the inning. It's runners on first and third for the Hillers. Sienna Harrigan coming to the plate. She's 0 for 2 so far today. 226 batting average on the season. Seven runs scored, seven driven in. Two doubles to her credit coming into this game. Coach Alberry with some strategy for Sienna. Here only we go. swing at strikes, only swing at strikes is a message. Don't help her out. Line up in the pitch. There's a bunt pulled back. Strike one, and the runner from first takes off. Carly Stevens gets the easy steal. So now it's runners on second and third with two outs. Two to one lead for Medfield. But the tying run on third base. Fouled away. Oh and two. She could be the hero here. Base hit would probably score two. Well, left field is playing kind of shallow. A lot of Potts has pitched yeah. well. So far, down low, one and two. Good eye, good eye. Oh, all the action really, offense, offensive wise, has been in the sixth inning. She'll get a piece of this one up the right side, but right to the first baseman it goes for oh. out number three. It's a two to one Medfield lead as we head to the top of the seventh on H cam. Top of the seventh inning, due up for Bedfield, eight, nine, and one. Caroline Mills, Madeline Holm, and Alana Potts. 
Juliana Cedia remains out on the mound. She has pitched a good ball game, but offense has been tough to come by with this very good pitching matchup between CD and Potts as that's fouled away. Mills obviously survived uh, her facial over here by the, uh, by the opening, camera opening. Trying to go for that pop-up. Rain starting to fall once again. Down low, one and one. So the Hillers will be down to their final three outs in the bottom of this inning. Coach Allen will be working on her algorithms on the bench to see what pitch she could throw. Line up in the pitch. Oh, I don't know what was wrong with that pitch. Two and one. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit. And this is up the left side, picked up by the shortstop. McIntyre with the throw to first, gets the out. Nice play by Melissa McIntyre over there. No hesitation, just scooped it and threw over to first base. That was a good catch by Bella Otzi. He was a little high on no. the throw and she was able to pull it down as Malin Holm will step in. Ball was right there, right at chest, chest high. They were ready for it, both of them. Nicely done. Wind up and the pitch. Up high. Just Thought about it. it. Thought about it. Got to make some hay with the bottom of the lineup. Green becoming a little more consistent here in the seventh inning. Very frightening. Ball was outside, obviously, but... Uh, Sometimes the umpire has nearly a strike call when he signals the ball. Sticks his hand out to the side. He might be visually impaired. Two and oh. Three and oh. That was a definite ball right there. You don't want to give up a walk to the nine hitter. Rio pitch. There's ball four. I think that was a pinch hitter, Tom. And that'll bring up a lot of pots. Number zero. Ah, you are correct. And that was uh, Bitsy Crowley who was the pinch hitter. So Bitsy Crowley draws the walk. And the rain's starting to become more and more consistent. Nasty weather expected throughout the course of the night. It's showing up a little earlier than expected. There's a bunt foul. Corners were charging on that play. Heads up play by Jordan Chevry covering third base. I like to see that. Good fundamentals. Not to ever abandon a base. It's one on, one out. Wish the boys would learn how to do that. Set to deliver. There's a bunt foul. 0 oh and 2. Medfield trying to scratch another run across. Hopkinton will have the bottom part of their order coming up. We'll see whether they get any pinch hitters inserted. Oh, she, oh, she needed an ax. She went chopping wood with that. Here comes the wind. Oh, boy. Think that tower is safe, Tom? Yeah, I don't, it's not Oklahoma. Strike three, no. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't know what the umpire was looking at there. One and two. Umpiring by Braille over there. I don't normally complain about the umpire. That was bad. Been a lot of questionable calls. This is up the middle. Pass to reach the CD. Picked up by Whalen. Throw to first. 
And I guess they called her safe. I don't know about that, Larry. I thought uh, she was out. A little bit longer stretch by Onzi. Might have had it by uh, six inches or so. Ariana Tristani will step in. She's trouble. Hit 518 well, the calls, coming in the game. Calls going Medfield's way today. What are you trying to imply? <laughs> I'm not implying anything. I tried to give the ump five well, no, bucks the, before the, the game. The strike zone has been consistent, consistently not very good. <laughs> that, that last sequence, I didn't like that. I didn't like it at all. New ball for Cedia. Jill Cedia going to go talk to her sister Juliana. And we'll have a meeting. Conference in the pitcher's circle. That's one out and two on for Medfield. As according to the umpire, Lana Potts was just able to beat out that grounder. Well, home plate is 17 inches wide and 10 inches deep. That softball is six and a half inches. I thought she got some of that plate. There's a ball. Well, this umpire, he's not very lenient with the uh, strike calls, that's for sure. It's not like he's got some place to go. And I think that was a strike. Yeah. One and one is the count. Up high. Nice pull down by Cedia. Two and one. Coach Allen B says, Juliana, it's all yours. It's your game. No more warm-up activity. And this is hit over to right field and past the reach of Harrigan. One run around to score. And the runner behind her heading to third. It's a three to one midfield lead. Runners on second and third. An RBI single by Tristani. She advances on the throw in. Now that was odd. That ball hit Harrigan in right field on the knee and caromed over to Holly in center field. She threw the ball in. Ball was cut off. I think they're going to have a conversation about that oddity out there. I think I've ever seen that happen. Laura Clifford will step in. And unfortunately, if this rain continues to pick up, we will have to stop the broadcast. So we're hoping that the rain uh, maybe will die down for a couple minutes. There's nothing cheap about that hit, though. There's a bunt, and it's well fielded by the third baseman. The flip home is dropped. Everyone's safe. It's a four to one game. Could have just tagged the runner right there. It's a little Pot squeeze play there. Pot scores, Tristani up to third. Laura Clifford gets the RBI. That's the padding Medfield was looking for. Midfield coach giving signals to his runner at first base. Probably going to send her. We could have another bunt situation here. You can hear the raindrops on my headset, I think. There's a strike. Nope, it's a ball. Looked like a strike call. The way the umpire sticks his hand out to the side there. Two and oh. Runner's gonna walk down to second. Runner's in second and third now. Three and oh. Runner's on second and third, one out. 
Redfield with a chance to add even more security. This umpire is not going to give you a strike unless it's right down the middle. He's getting wet over there too, so. Well, apparently he likes it. There's ball four, bases loaded. We'll bring up Molly Glasheen, the shortstop. Well, you know, if the rain continues to pick up, you gotta think this turf's getting wet. It's a four to one game. Maybe, uh, obviously you wanna try to get through it, you are in the seventh, but. Or you can go out there and squeegee uh, the field in between innings. Gotta consider That's the safety option. out there. Is this turf safety? Get, yeah, <laughs> turf gets very slippery. So what would happen? <laughs> so Molly Glasheen, the shortstop, stepping in. She's 0 for 3. 3-3 three to three in Franklin at the bottom of the third. Bases loaded here. Fouled away. Still one out. You promised me it wasn't going to start raining till 6.30. Well, that's uh, what they were saying earlier. But well, I guess meteorology is pretty difficult at this time. Like time travel or black holes or algorithms? One and like one is the count. Juliana was twirling a pretty good game up until last inning and this inning here is a pop up. And out of the reach of everybody, two and two. High, full count. Well, walk here would drive in a run. You know, for a pitcher, it must be uh, kind of tough to grip the ball at this point. Well, they've swapped out balls a couple times already this inning. And this is hit in the air over to right field, and that'll get in for a hit. One run is in, here comes another. And it's going to be a six to one throw to third is going to get away. Everybody's safe. A two RBI double for Molly Glasheen. Six to one Medfield. We'll bring up Maddie Mullaney and. Yeah. We'll continue on here in this inning. Still only one out. Well, you had um, yes. some warm-up action earlier, but CD remains in the game. Foul, foul back, out of play. Scorebook is, looks like it's melting a little bit there. It certainly is. And Charlotte can warming up earlier, but they're gonna ride out Cedia here. We'll be broadcasting on Monday night, seven o'clock. Swing and a miss. At least I will. Somebody's going to a Stanley Cup game. Somebody, I know. Oh and two is the count. Didn't invite me to go. And this is up. The left side to the shortstop, throw to first. They get the out, another run scores. RBI sacrifice ground out for Maddie Mullaney. That will bring up Abby Gardner, the right fielder. So a 7-1 lead for Medfield. Up high.
It'll be tough to put a sixth spot on the board if the score stays where it is. Two and oh. CD's thrown a lot of pitches this inning. Swing and a miss, two and one. If the score stays this way, they, they'll split the series one game apiece. Hopkins and winning in midfield, five to four. Three and one count. Runner the rain up. delay in the Franklin. I'm sure there would have been here too if the game was in its earlier stages. There's a strike. Now, that, uh, that hitter couldn't have hit the ball with a sandwich. Well, hey, I guess it's a makeup call. Terribly inconsistent strike. Oh, his ankle high. Come on. Swing and a miss for the out. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh. Hillers have some work to do, trailing 7-1 to one on H cam. Plenty of work. Bottom of the seventh, Hillers down to their final three outs, 9-1 and two due up. Bella Ansi, Emily Whalen, and Tara Kester. Ansi is 0 for two so far today. Lana Potts going for the complete game. She has her team leading seven to one. And there for a strike. Generous strike call there. There's some gas pots did. Clouds starting to break up a little bit. A little too late though, I have a feeling. This is hit foul, 0 and 2. Onzi finds herself down 0-2. Seems to be stopping a little bit later than we'd like. There's strike three, one away. Looking. She left her shoes in the batter's box, as Dennis Eckersley would say. Emily Whalen will step in. Well, a tough loss to take for the Hillers. Cedia pitched very well through the first six innings, and then in the seventh, midfield got a rally going. And they played it five runs in that inning. Miller's down to their final two outs. Inside. I don't know what good a bunt will do in this situation. She did uh, a little 20 foot base hit in the first inning. The pot's had to eat. But other than that, Waylon has been kept in check. She'll get a piece of this one. Into right field it goes. A one out hit for Waylon. That'll bring up Tara Kester. Medfield coach is telling his players not to worry about Emily Waylon. They'll take an out and give up a base. You know what they say, there's no crying in softball, right Tom? That's right. There's a strike. Pot set to deal. And that pitch inside. Whalen steals. She's safe. Slid right past the bag. 
You are right, Tom. This turf is slick. It certainly is. Some heavy rain earlier. She had to stick her lunch hooks into that base. She didn't want to get tagged out. One and one count, one out for the Hillers. Tara Kester so far today is 0 for 3. She's standing there in an open stance. The ball in the dirt. Wayland's going to swipe third. And she is safe. Another stolen base for Emily Whalen. They have those safety bases there. She was just safe there. Nice steal. Well, you got to be aggressive in this situation, trailing by six. Medfield will still take it out. Katie Holly do up next. And this is hit in the air over to right field to the fence. That's gone. See you later. A two-run homer for Tara Kester. Oh, she's got bragging rights at home now. And it's a 7-3 to three ball game. She crushed that ball past the right field fence. Emily Whalen scores, and Kester comes around with the two-run blast. Katie Holly will step in. One out in the inning for the Hillers. Addie Gardner just looked, looked at that ball, turned around for a second, and it was over her head. It was gone. Line up and the pitch up high. Well, that's exactly what the Hillers needed there. But is it too, too little, too late? That's the question of the day. And this is up the left side. That's going to get through for a hit. Holly will stay put at first. A one-out single. Now Jillian Cedia will step in. And we know she can hit the ball past the fence. Potts trading balls now, getting a dry one. She's looking at her pitch chart on her wrist there. I don't know whether that's legal, Tom, whether you can have anything on your on your arm. Yeah, that'll be an interesting rule to research. I already alerted the coach to it. I don't think I don't think it's allowed. They don't allow the pitcher to wear eye black. That's up high, runner taking off from first, and she will steal second. Katie Holly with the steal there, and once again almost sliding past the bag with the slick turf. She's fast though. Certainly is. Will she try to steal third? Well, Jill Cedia showed bunt and Mills charged, and Katie would do that. That's fouled away. Hillers have five steals today. To add to their league leading 62 steals coming in. I don't know what that's lead leading, but I just figured I'd say it. And Cedia is going to come over to dry off her bat. Get some pine tar. One and one count. Well, Hiller's JV baseball team continuing to play over there. Up high. Two and one. CD tying her shoe at home plate. Just high, three and one. Well, could a lot of pots perhaps be getting a little tired she out there? She very well could be. Big Jordan Chavarri is on deck. There's a walk. 
It'll be runners on first and second for the Hillers. One out. And I'd imagine we'll see a pinch runner, and we will. There goes Megan Sullivan out to pinch run once again. Heather Sebo usually pinch runs for Jill Cedia. Kristen McCluskey at the plate. Rain to stop now, Tom, if you were wondering. Oh, and one count. Oh, Katie so. Hawley looking at that naked third base. I don't know if she's got designs on taking it. And strike two. Lusky is one for three in this game. Singled back in the fourth. Fouled away. Cow remains 0 and 2. Nicely spoiled by McCluskey. I thought that was Chevrolet. My, my bad. Listen, McIntyre on deck. She'll get a piece of this one over to right field. It goes. That drops in. That's a fair ball. Katie Holly being waved around. She'll come around to score. And that's all that will score. But it is an RBI double for McCluskey. And it's a 7-4 ball game. Still only one out in the inning. Mound visit might be in order by the midfield coach. So Megan Sullivan, who's pinch running for Jillian Cedia, is at third. McCluskey at second. And you have the tying run at the plate. Alyssa McIntyre. See if she has the take sign here. There's a strike. Now she's seen it. Now she's seen it. The 0-1. Gets a piece of this one, and it's caught in right field. Runners stay put, two away. Hillers down to their final out. But Juliana Cedia coming to the plate. <laughs> nice play by the right fielder out there. That looked like it had base hit written all over it. It certainly did, but good range by Addie Gardner. It was all right, it was you know, a 10. Can Juliana Cedia tie this game up? She could do it with one swing of her bat. It only has the capability. The fans would go absolutely wild. Fouled Ooh, away. Watch out, Tom. One and one. Ball's coming down towards you. Watch out. Potts really got a bear down here. Down low. Well, you wonder if Potts is a little hesitant to throw anything uh, in the zone here. The first well. base open. Two and one count. Three and one. Runners on second and third. Two outs for the Hillers. Redfield leading seven to four here in the bottom of the seventh. That's like calling the pot or the kettle. Never mind. The lefty steps back in. Juliana Cedio, one for three so far today. Singled in the sixth. Swing and a miss. 
Down to her last strike, full count. She had one thing on her mind with that swing. Inside, she'll draw the walk. Base is loaded for the Hillers. Love a pinch runner. In the pinch run is Carly Stevens. Sienna Harrigan steps to the plate. She's 0 for 3 so far today. Fouled away. 0 and 1. A walk as good as a hit here. Two twenty six average coming into this game for Harrigan. Gets a piece of this slow roller up the first base side, picked up, and she'll step on the bag for the out, and that'll do it. The Medfield Warriors come away with the 7-4 victory over the Hopkinton Hillers. A six-run top of the seventh, just too much. Or a five-run top of the seventh, just too much to overcome for the Hillers, who fall to a very good Medfield Warriors team here today. The final score for the final time. Medfield 7, the Hopkinton Hillers 4. Medfield improving to 13 and 4 on this season. The Hillers fall to 12 and 5. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers softball on HCAM. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk to you again soon. Yeah.